Hello and welcome. This is Chrissy Hellier and I am coming to you from um, the not very sunny Perth today. So uh, my plan was to broadcast from outside and, and show you the beautiful weather and the beach. But um, unfortunately, two things have happened. My internet is not that great and of course it's not a very nice day. But um, my sister-in-law has come to the rescue and it's my pleasure to be here on behalf of Eduro Learning to talk to you today about fake news and the responsibility to be digitally literate. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, this is a part of our series course that um, we have launched. It's a, um, the series is called Teaching Empathy to United Divided World and it has three courses, one of which is fake news and the responsibility to be digitally literate. So that's what we want to talk to you about today. Um, hopefully I will be able to answer any questions that you may have for me in the comment section. So please feel free to say hello and um, tell me where you're from and ask away any questions. Um, this is my first time doing a Facebook Live. I uh, hope I'm talking loud enough. I did a little test this morning to see uh, what the sound quality was like. Um, I'm trying this with my phone and it was a little bit low so hopefully now that I'm in a, in a room um, it'll be a little bit easier for you to hear. Um, my screen is telling me, want to know who's watching your live video? Swipe left to see your video. So video viewers, so I'm just going to do that now. And um, oh, that will reveal who my uh, comments and things are. So I'm being told I sound great. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's wonderful to know. So being the geek that I am, of course, I um, don't want to miss telling you all the exciting things that we have um, to say about um, fake news. Um, I made a little sketch note. Um, for those of you who know um, something about me, I've just started sketch noting and usually somebody sketch notes while you're talking. I've kind of cheated a little bit and jumped ahead and I've done a sketch note reminding me of all the things that I want to talk about. So at the end of this Facebook Live, I'll make my sketch note available to you. So don't worry about writing any notes or anything like that because I've already done it for you. And um, you'll also um, hear me share a lot of the resources that um, that we have available for you on your blog. So we are adurolearning.com. So if you want to head on over there, you can see what we have available for you. So anyway, the topic of the day, fake news and the responsibility to be digitally literate. What do we actually mean when we say that? Um, we all know that the rise of fake news has become more apparent, especially in um, the last, I don't know, four, five, six months. And it's becoming more important these days to really help students understand how to distinguish between fake news and real news. And um, we've always needed to teach our students to evaluate their sources, but it seems that now more than ever, it's um, really important. So today I wanna share with you six things that we can do as educators. And if you're a parent and you have um, your kids at home, these are some things that you can do as well. So we just go through one by one and um, I'll share my thoughts on those particular things that you can do to help um, your students or your children distinguish between fake news and real news. Um, if I'm talking a little bit fast, just let me know and I'll slow down a bit. Us Kiwis, we have a tendency to talk really fast. And I know I talk really fast when, uh, when I'm nervous and I'm incredibly nervous. <laughs> so anyway, the tip number one. Okay, the, the most easiest thing that I think we can do to help um, stem the flow of fake news um, is that we need to make sure that we get news from multiple sources. Um, that's something that we've always done in the classroom anyway. We've always encouraged our students to um, back up what they're saying with lots of sources, but now we need to tweak that a little bit and we need to back up 
what our sources are saying with other sources. And so it's really important to encourage kids to look at this is one source and then can I find that information from another source? So almost like one source is verifying another source is verifying another source. That's not the only thing that we can do. So we need to also let our students know that that's not enough. Not today anyway, not with the spread of fake news and how much easier it is for fake news to be spread in the first place. But that's probably the number one thing that we really should be doing in our classroom with our kids. Hi Robin, I'm so glad that you were able to, <laughs> to pop in. I'm really excited about catching up with you face to face uh, very soon. It's really lovely that you can join us. Thanks for saying hello. I feel like I'm talking to someone now. The second thing that I'd like to share with you that you can do is that um, you can en encourage kids to uh, read laterally across a website. And what I mean by that is that when we go to a website and we get information, we want to really encourage our students to click any links that are on that website. So go laterally. So I've gone to my source and I've got some information and now where does that information take me laterally, this way, this way, and see where those links are going. One of the classic things about fake news is that once that information is there, it doesn't actually go any further or it just sends you round in a loop. So that's a really good red flag is that if you can't go laterally across a website and get either more information about the information that you were looking for in the first place, or if you can't get any more verification from a totally different source, that what is being said on this particular website or source that you're getting the information from, then that's another little red flag. So now we've got two red flags maybe, we've um, got we can't find our information from multiple sources and now when we do find information from a source we can't go anywhere else laterally. So that could essentially tell us that oh, okay I think I need to really dig a little bit deeper and um, see whether I can get another red flag or whether I can get rid of a red flag. So that was tip number two. Tip number three that I have to share with you is that um, it's really important to teach kids about what happens when you get a Google search return. Now, a little bit later in um, our series teaching um, Empathy to United Divided World, we touch on a little bit more about Google search, but what I want to share with you today is that um, we really need students to understand that the, um, the way that Google search is done, the results in the order that they come in aren't necessarily the result of validity. So that means that um, just because there's a result that comes up first or second or third or fourth, that actually doesn't mean that first is the best source, second is the um, next source, and third is the next source. So we need to just remind students all the time that it, it's just a search return of what is out there. And Google is always changing how it ranks those, um, those results. Hey Ben, nice to have you join us from um, Bangkok. Um, now I'm really not feeling alone and um, I have um, some wonderful people in the audience. So um, please feel free to jump in and leave a comment that you think I should share with everyone else, especially if there's some things that you're already doing in the classroom that I don't mention, that would be fantastic. Um, as I said, we do have another Facebook Live coming up in the coming weeks where we'll dig a little bit deeper into um, teaching kids about the Google search um, page and we'll have some freebies um, available for you as well. Don't let me forget to mention that um, we do have a number of freebies for you today and I'll tell you a little bit more about those when we get closer to the end. Alright, so that's three tips so far. Um, just recapping in case you've just joined us, we've got 
tip number one is encourage your students to get their news or their information or their research from a uh, variety of sources or multiple sources at least. Tip number two was encourage the lateral reading of websites and by that I mean clicking away from that original site and seeing if you can get from one site to another instead of just going around and around in a loop because that's a classic red flag that your information may not be as real or as authentic as uh, you might have been led to believe. And tip number three was just a reminder about Google search results and how the way that they are coming in on the index page is not necessarily a ranking of validity. And so it's really important to, that's a skill that we really need to teach students when they're using Google search or any other search engine for that matter, is just thinking about um, how those results come in and that it really isn't um, a validity result. Like, so number one is not necessarily the best um, resource for you to be getting your information from. So now we're up to tip number four. Now this is a big one. I just had a really interesting conversation with my sister-in-law who has very kindly let me come here and use her internet since mine is so bad at the moment. Um, we were talking this morning about being suspicious of pictures. So um, more so than ever, because it's so easy to share information, share images online, it's um, incredibly important to be suspicious of images. Now we've all seen the rounds of the um, image, I'm sure, of the big shark that's coming out of the water and, and seems to be grabbing at a helicopter, and we know that that picture is fake. Um, I think we were having a conversation this morning, my sister-in-law and I, about the one that's doing the rounds at the moment, especially in Australia, we've got some serious flooding going on over in, the, um, uh, in New South Wales, and there have been some reports about um, sharks being in, in the water. Um, there's always reports about crocodiles being in the water. Now, those are true, but um, there's been some... Uh, images floating around the internet at the moment with um, sharks at the bottom of an escalator and it being reported that this is the result of the serious flooding that's going on, especially in Queensland. There's some um, very, very severe flooding going on and so there's sharks in the, in the water and of course this is not true. That The image looks really, really good and it looks like it could be true but of course it really isn't. And so just using those three tips that I mentioned earlier about, you know, multiple sources and the lateral reading of a website and um, using a bit of Google search, you can find that actually that particular image is, um, it's actually doctored. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Andy, yes I'm right, I agree with you there, I hate sharks as well and they seem to be very prevalent in Western Australia so um, I'm right there with you, I don't like them at all. But um, back to the important point about one of the ways that we can help stop um, the spread of fake news is, is to be incredibly suspicious of um, images. Uh, I'm not sure if um, a lot of people are aware of this as well, but there's a lot about um, perspective in uh, photography and it's very, very easy just by using the crop feature to portray a different perspective as in, you know, an, an example is um, how big a crowd is. So just by zooming in, you can actually give the impression that there is a bigger crowd than there actually is. So that's something to be um, aware of. Um, thanks, Emily. Emily's suggesting that it's a, it would be a really great assignment for students to doctor some images and then share them with other students and teachers to get their impressions. And um, students could see how easy it is to um, doctor those images and how easy it is to get someone to believe that those images are true. That's a that's a great tip, Emily. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so again, that's the key is like be suspicious of 
any images these days. And I think it's it, it's the same about the information. You not doubt the information, but just be a little bit skeptical of the information or the image and do a little bit of checking just to um, see if you can give validity to what you are seeing. And I think that um, with anything these days, that's a really important skill for us to teach our students. It's so, so important, um, especially with the rise of how easy it is to put anything up there on the web that um, we do as much as we can to help kids understand that just because it is there, doesn't mean that it is true. And that kind of leads me to tip number five. And tip number five is all about um, encouraging students to learn just a little bit more about the source of the information that they are getting. And by that I mean just checking to see who exactly it is that is giving that information. Um, is it a newspaper outlet? Is it a single person? Is it coming from an institution? Is it coming from the government? And just dig a little bit deeper into who's actually put that information out there. And is that person or institute um, a credible source to begin with? And again, I mentioned earlier that we are going to delve a little bit deeper into like Google search itself and what um, how to how to look at the results on an index page further along in this wonderful series of ours where we do Facebook live events every week we're going to talk a little bit more about the advanced um, search tools that are available to students and teachers um, and in that sense that will help um, with teaching kids how they can actually learn more about the source. And I think probably one of the easiest things that we can do straight away about learning a little bit more about the source is just look for that about page. And that should tell you a little bit more about whoever it is ha has put that information. If there's no about page or there's nowhere where you can find out who has put this information forward, then that's kind of one of those little red flags again that um, means, okay, I, I need to dig a little bit further into this. There's a possibility that um, this source could be fake. So that's five tips that we're up to already. And um, I'll just quickly go through them just in case you've just joined us. So getting your news from multiple source was tip number one. Tip number two was lateral reading across a website. So when you get there in your information that you are clicking around on that um, page and seeing where those links are leading you to, if they're just sending you around and around in the loop and you're not actually learning any more from other sources, then that's a red flag that perhaps this is not a very good source to be using. Uh, tip number three was um, the validity results of a Google search, that just the way that they are ranked in return doesn't necessarily mean that the best one is at the top. You might find the best one for what you're looking for on page two even. Um, and tip number four was to be especially suspicious of images these days because um, with any uh, rise in technology tools, it's getting easier and easier to doctor those images. And we've just spoken about learning more about the source. So learning a little bit more about who's put that source up there and is that particular person or, or institute or um, government department even um, a reliable or credible source. I have one more tip for you, it's a bonus tip and it's really about um, what we as educators would really like to see. Um, we want you to encourage the end of fake news. So. All of the tips that I've kind of given you have been more about um, consuming what is on the internet. So we're looking for resources and when we're um, going and finding what's already out there. What we really also want to be very conscious of and we want to um, help our students understand is that we don't want to encourage the spread of fake news. 
And so we want to encourage them that whatever they are putting out or whatever they are creating and putting up on the internet is in fact real and not fake. Unless of course there is a particular reason like maybe to entertain um, that you would do something in a in a joke but making it very clear that it is a joke but we really want to encourage students about the things that they are putting on the internet that they are not part of spreading the what is fake in the first place so just giving some thought perhaps to um, whether what I am sharing or resharing is indeed factual and not um, being quick to push that share button and share something that later turns out to be fake. And so we really, really want to encourage our students to help us to end the spread of fake news. So that was um, the six tips that I had for you, um, shining a spotlight on fake news and our responsibility to be digitally literate. Um, it's kind of exactly the same as how we would ask kids um, to double check um, anything that they've heard, um, anything that they've seen, and make sure that um, they're getting some information from a variety of sources and um, checking who the source is. All things that we do in our offline world, um, but for some reason it's a little bit more difficult to encourage students to do it in the online world, especially since sometimes there's a perception that if I see it online, it must be true. And we really have to dispel that because it is a myth, um, unfortunately, because there are um, a lot of people who um, think it's funny or... Um, have a different agenda about spreading fake news and so we really really would like to see the end of that and I think from an educator's point of view it's it's quite easy those tips that I've um, shared with you today then they're, they're not hard um, I also want to stress that they're just not a one-time thing this is something that we probably need to be doing all of the time like every time those um, research projects come out these are all things that we could be sharing or reminding our kids about every single time and so they're not hard but um, we do need to be persistent and we do need to be consistent with um, those things that we can do to help stop the spread of fake news so um, I just want to take a little bit of time to um, remind you about um, our blog. Uh, we have quite a number of um, resources that are freely available. These tips in particular that I've shared, um, they're already up on our blog and a little bit more information in depth about um, those particular tips. So that's already up. Our blog is edurolearning.com and you can forward slash blog or you can just go to edurolearning.com and you can get access to um, what we have there for teachers and what we have there for parents and what we have there for anyone else in, in the world who's interested. So there's lots of things there. Um, going alongside this particular um, Facebook Live event, um, again we have my little sketch notes that we're going to share with you but we also have an awesome infographic. Um, just about this particular topic, fake news and the responsibility to be digitally literate. Um, that's got a number of tips on it and a number of quotes that might be um, quite appropriate to hang in the classroom. Um, you can get that freebie, that infographic freebie, quite easily by just going to our website and um, clicking on teachers and then clicking on resources and you'll be encouraged to sign up for our awesome newsletter that we send out. We have a wonderful person, Marissa, she um, will um, put together th these amazing newsletters that are full of tips and tricks and um, things that you can use tomorrow in your classroom. They're all available on our website as well. So I really encourage you to go to our website and check out what we have available. This is just the first in a, a big series of Facebook Live events that we're going to do. So we've got another one scheduled next week and um, you're going to get me again and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit more about um, Google search and um, 
sharing with you some more freebies that we have available to you. If you are um, an educator and you're really interested in learning a little bit more about this particular topic or the bigger topic, Teaching Empathy to Unite a Divided World, um, please know that we have some courses available. Uh, we have a series available called Teaching Empathy to Unite a Divided World, which was written by the amazing Emily Roth, who is in our audience. So that's big shout out to you, Emily. Um, we are going to uh, release that as a series. So there are a um, there are three courses in that series. Fake news and the responsibility to be digitally literate is the first course in that news. Uh, not in that news, sorry, in that course, um, the series. If you don't want to take the series, if you're not interested in, in taking three courses, we do have this particular course, Fake News and the Responsibility to be Digi Digitally Literate. We have that available as an express course. Um, just head on over to our blog and you can find out a little bit more about um, how to go about getting that. It's a self-paced course. It's got about a week's worth of work, but the great thing about the Express course is that you have access to that material for over a year and you can take it at your own pace. You don't have to do it all in the one week. Um, there is a lot more resources and um, a lot more strategies and tips available for you in that particular course. So a big shout out to Emily because um, she's written a really amazing um, course there. Uh, the other thing that I just want to share before I go is that um, I am very thankful that you tuned in. I've got one more question. Um, Robin's asked um, my thoughts on some search engines um, such as Kidrex or SquirrelNet um, or will that be addressed in the future? Uh, we actually, I'm putting together the uh, free PDF that we're going to offer um, next week and the following week. And yes, we are going to um, talk a little bit more about um, search engines that are just for kids. So please tune in. Um, you can always watch this video again because uh, it's recorded so you can watch it again in your own time. But yes, Robin, we will definitely be addressing um, kid-friendly search engine websites um, a bit later. Um, thank you, Leslie, for your comment. Yes, uh, I think that that's probably the biggest tip is to really help um, kids to understand that they can be part of the solution and stop the spread of fake news. Well, I've been chatting away now. According to my watch, it's buzzing on my wrist. I've been chatting away for almost 30 minutes now. And I, again, want to thank you for tuning in. Um, please know that you can find these tips that I've shared um, on our edurolearning.com blog. You can find um, the freebies that we've got an infographic for you. I'll share my sketch note with you um, and you can keep coming back to these tips. We have um, a couple of blog posts that are especially dedicated to the fake news, real news. And there's another one about... Um, I think it has another three tips. They're very similar to the ones that I've shared with you today, but there's a little bit more information there. So that's all from me um, this week. Tune in again next week. It'll be the same time. Hopefully I'll have a, a nicer outdoor background for you and fingers crossed uh, my internet is fixed. It's been an absolute delight having you in the audience and speaking to you about fake news and the responsibility to be digitally literate. So this is Chrissy Hallier um, coming to you live for not much longer um, from the wonderful city Perth in Western Australia. Um, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for um, joining us. Bye.